Alright everybody, well we're on ArtStation as you can see and we're looking at the ArtStation portfolio page uh, of uh, Connor Hessel. Now Connor sent in uh, this piece right here, this steampunk generator uh, made by him uh, to be used in a steampunk themed deathmatch game and uh, he asked me to review it, so that's what we're going to do. Now before we get into today's video, uh, I just want to make a general comment here. Uh, I started doing these reviews last week. I've asked people to send in their work, but keep in mind that the review that I'm doing here is my personal opinion and nothing else, okay? So it doesn't make the piece better or worse, it's just my two cents, right? And all the pieces that have been sent in are uh, have been sent in by the artists themselves and they specifically asked me to do the review. And also, uh, pretty important, I have not been compensated in any way to do this, right? Okay, so let's get into the review here. Well, in this case, we're talking about the steampunk generator. So that's a single piece, and that's the only thing I'm going to be reviewing today because there's nothing else in the portfolio. So if I scrub down on this page right here, this is all there is. Now, it's been posted 16 days ago, so there's not a lot going on, and uh, that's totally fine because, you know, as uh, you move forward, your portfolio will grow. But that said, uh, if I created something like this, I would have more posted on this page. And why would I do that? Well, for the simple reason that if you look at who looks at uh, portfolio pages in our station, they're uh, either through the artist or potential clients, right? Now, a 3D artist would want to know what your workflow is, what software have you used, uh, what does your UV map look like, what does your wireframe look like, and so forth. Uh, if it's a potential client and they have a specific workflow, uh, they would want to see the same thing, right? So I would definitely uh, add a lot more information about this specific piece to get a better understanding of what we're looking at. For example, in this shot right here, uh, there's a front view of the steampunk generator and then the, here is a, a larger shot of the exact same thing from a different angle. Uh, but it's not that apparent initially. Um, you might think it's a different one. So if you want to show off your model from multiple angles, uh, be deliberate about it, I would say, and put them side by side so people have a good understanding what's the front and what's the back, okay? Now, looking at the texturing, I think the texturing is uh, done uh, very well. Um, most likely a uh, substance painter looking at it. Um, a lot of copper going on, of course, uh, not too much brass, uh, which is kind of interesting because it's steampunk. Uh, I'm surprised a little bit about the use of chrome. Looking at the little handle on the door down there and the little ring uh, going up to the gauge, uh, that seems to be chrome. Uh, steampunk era is late 1800s to my knowledge, so I'm not too sure about that, okay? But all in all, a very nice texture. Now, uh, when it comes to texturing, um, what always adds a value is if you make things look believable based on their use. Now, what do I mean by that? You have a copper pipe going from uh, the uh, gauge there uh, to the main vessel or the main cylinder. And you see a little bit of corrosion on that pipe there. Now, that sells the object quite well. It always works very good if you do that. So one opportunity that might be here would be to do a vertical seam on the main cylinder uh, just in sight so you can add some rivets and maybe some corrosion there. If you look at the, uh, the vertical pipe on the left here uh, where you let off uh, excessive steam, you see some uh, dripping down here, which is really nice. That's exactly what I mean. It makes it look really functional. Now, of course, you got some fantasy elements as well. For example, this nuclear symbol. Uh, quite sure that in the late 1800s, we didn't have anything like that, okay? Uh, but all in all, it's, um, it looks really good from a construction point of view. It, uh, it sells well because it looks believable. You got all the parts you need there. Of course, you got some more as well. For example, these pipes here. I'm not quite sure what the role is of those, but it's just, uh, you know, kid bashing, I would say. All right, so uh, besides that, I received a, a wireframe as well, so we'll have a look at that too. Hang on. Well, and there you have it, and as you can see, everything is triangulated. Now, uh, what I would love to see, though, is the actual uh, UV layout uh, to get a better understanding of how it has been uh, constructed. But all in all, I would say that it looks uh, very clean. I don't see any obvious issues here. Um, not sure about the, the tri count or the poly count uh, because I don't know the exact uh, purpose or use of uh, the model. But I would say, um, you know, if I take everything into account, it's a very clean setup, right? 
Okay, so because I only received this one piece and I can only look at it from one angle, there's not a lot more that I can add to this. So if you want your work to be reviewed and uh, you want to send that in, please make sure that you either send in your uh, complete portfolio or if you want me to review one piece, you uh, send in enough information so I can talk about all aspects of that. Um, but in conclusion, uh, Connor, a, a very, very uh, a good job. I really love the model. I think you did, a, a, from a technical standpoint, a really good job uh, from what I can see of it. And from an aesthetic point of view, it looks great. Okay, so two thumbs up for you, Connor. Thank you so much for letting me review this and uh, see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.